Hi, John here. In this video, I just want to take a quick look at a chiller plant. I'll show you all of the main parts that are involved and how a chiller plant works. Here is our chiller plant. It's a very common design. You're going to see this quite often. The only difference is that with this particular chiller plant, some of these pieces of equipment are going to be covered in insulation. Since this is a Savory Snacks video, let's just run through exactly how it works without discussing any of the theory. Although if you want to have a look at the theory and understand it, then check out vapor compression cycle or vapor compression refrigeration cycle and that'll explain to you exactly what we're looking at here and how a chiller works. But I'm going to do hopefully a pretty good job of that anyway. We've got a centrifugal compressor on the top of the chiller. This type of compressor is actually a hermetic type compressor or a hermetic centrifugal type compressor. It's hermetic because the motor is connected to the impeller. This would actually be our electric motor here. And it connects to the impeller here without a shaft seal. So that's the hermetic design of the compressor. We draw refrigerant into the compressor. The impeller is not shown here because we've taken the cross section and it's disappeared. But refrigerant is drawn into the compressor. It's compressed. I'll run through this in more detail in a moment. We discharge the refrigerant from the compressor. It goes into a shell and tube heat exchanger. And this shell and tube heat exchanger forms our condenser because we condense the refrigerant from a vapor and turn it into a liquid. From there, the liquid refrigerant comes out. It flows through our expansion valve. It's this item where my mouse is. And then it will flow into another shell and tube heat exchanger, the lower one. And this one forms our evaporator. Now we're going to boil the refrigerant, changing it from a liquid to a vapor. So we've got a condenser over here, that's this one. That condenses our refrigerant, changing it from a vapor to a liquid. Over here, we take our liquid refrigerant, we boil it, and that changes it to a vapor. Now, let's go through that again, just in a bit more detail. We've got a low pressure, relatively low temperature, refrigerant vapor that's been drawn into our compressor. The compressor, compresses the refrigerant, which causes the temperature and pressure of the refrigerant to increase, although the refrigerant is still a vapor at this stage. We can use different compressor types to achieve this, the most common being the centrifugal design, the one that we're looking at now, although the other options would be the piston design, which is a reciprocating compressor, or maybe a screw compressor, or even a rotary vane type compressor. Generally though, you'll see centrifugal, piston, or screw. The refrigerant vapor enters into our condenser. We cool it, and this causes the refrigerant to change state from a vapor to a liquid. So now we've got a hot liquid at high pressure. We gather the liquid from the base of our condenser and pass it to our expansion valve. As the liquid flows through the expansion valve, we get a large pressure drop, which changes some of the refrigerant from a liquid into a vapor, and that refrigerant then enters into our evaporator. The tubes within the evaporator, let me just configure this so we can see what's going on here. The tubes are submerged in refrigerant, and when we apply our heating medium, our heating fluid, we're going to boil the refrigerant, and then the refrigerant changes state from a liquid to a vapor and absorbs some of the heat from whatever's heating it up. You can see here that we've got Let's imagine for a moment hot water going in and cold water coming out. The hot water goes in, passes through the tubes. This causes the refrigerant to boil, but also when the water is coming back on the opposite side, its temperature will most likely also cause the refrigerant to boil as well. As the refrigerant is boiling and taking all of the energy it needs to change state from a liquid to a vapor, correspondingly, that heat energy that it's taking is coming from the liquid that's flowing through the tubes. And that's how we get our cooling effect. On the opposite side here, in our condenser, the refrigerant gives up its heat to change from a vapor to a liquid. And we need to reject that heat. 
So we have a cold fluid going in here, passing through the tubes, and then we've got a hot fluid that's coming out because it's taken the heat from the refrigerant. Or another way to look at it, the refrigerant has given up its heat to this other liquid. The heat is then discharged to atmosphere, usually via a cooling tower. On the lower side, on the evaporator side, this would be our primary cooling circuit or our cooling circuit that we could use within a production process. Let's have a look at a real world example since we've got a bit of time left. Here's our to control the temperature within a building. If you want to access any of the 3D models shown in this video, head over to savory.com. We've got over 400 engineering models that are available. If you want to learn more about engineering, we've got over 60 hours of engineering video courses, lessons and tutorials, all available at savory.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Thank you very much for your time.